Even a person with very, very good eyesight needs a magnifying glass to look at this. The Oxford English Dictionary, the OED. The OED is for people who love the English language so much, you're willing to devote to it both some serious shelf space and um, potentially some serious eye strain. Um, this, these two volumes here, this is the compact edition. This is the little one, the one that condenses 20 giant volumes of regular size print into two volumes of impossible to read print. Now, one of the reasons that the OED is really important uh, is that it is a historical dictionary that tells you not only the meaning of a word, it also traces the evolution of that meaning. And so when you look through your magnifying glass at whatever it is that you're looking up, you can see that it cites for each definition the first few works of literature in which that word appears. It includes sentences or poetic lines in which the word appears, so you can see for yourself where, where it came from. Uh, poor Hemflo. Uh, let's take the word fringy. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, one of the meanings of the adjective fringy is, quote, furnished or adorned with a fringe or fringes, covered with fringes. And the OED cites a work called Crochet Castle by T.L. Peacock as the first example in literature of using the word fringy in that way. So it was 1831. All that surrounded their eyes' fringy portals was radiant as the forehead of the morning sky. Thank you, Mr. Peacock. So it is, it is reasonable to be a total dork about the OED. What other book do you buy comes with a magnifying glass? It is super fascinating and super useful. Having those, you know, here's how it was first used lines. It's just an invaluable resource if you're really interested in the word. Now here's the mystery in today's news. OED editors, Oxford English Dictionary editors, have been compiling and refining dictionary citations since the late 1800s, and they use thousands of sources. But one of those sources that has been used over and over and over again for dozens of words in the OED maybe doesn't exist. It, maybe it does, but they can't find it anywhere. And it has the OED editors stumped. So if we're gonna go back to our word fringy, um, the second documented use of that word to mean covered with fringes um, it's from this, an 1852 book called Meanderings of Memory. The usage was fluttering as the mantle's fringy rim. All in all, 51 different citations in the OED come from this specific book, this Meanderings of Memory. This book is cited all over the Oxford English Dictionary to help define the earliest usage of words like chapelt and cockabondi, which is a type of fly for fly fishing. Um, couch word, epistle, extemporize, flambeau, gigantomachy, revirginize, yes, seriously, revirginize, um, scavenge, vermin, warmthless, whinge. Whinge is one of my favorite British English words ever, whinge. But there is a slight crisis with that word, whinge, and with all of those other words as to where it came from. All of those words are sourced to meanderings of memory. They all reportedly appeared in meanderings of memory, which presumably was owned by at least one of the early editors of the Oxford English Dictionary, which is why it is all throughout this book. But recently, when a modern staffer was working on the entry for re-virginize, to render virginal again, to purify or renew, the staffer went looking for that original source that was referenced in the definition, recorded in the entry as meanderings of memory by an author known only as Nightlark. When that staffer went looking, the book itself, turns out, is nowhere to be found. So the chief bibliographer for the Oxford English Dictionary took up the search, and again, nothing. Nobody can find the book, and there's not much in terms of signs of its real existence. The only sign of its existence that we yet know of is from a bookseller's catalog from 1854. That entry says that Meanderings of Memory was written and published by a well-known connoisseur. But that's all we've got. 51 words are essentially homeless in history. Who is Nightlark, and what kind of book is Meanderings of Memory, and how come nobody can find it? According to the Oxford English Dictionary's chief bibliographer, one of the operating theories at this point is that the born, the, the, the book, the, 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 it's embarrassing, the book is maybe porn. And apparently if it was 1852 era porn, it wouldn't have been cataloged in the normal way and it'd be hard to find. But they really have no idea. And so now the OED is turning to the public for help. They are putting out a call to bibliophiles everywhere to please check your shelves, check the Google, check the remainder table at the library sale for this really important and possibly porny um, rare book. 
Have you ever seen a copy of this book? Can you identify the well-known connoisseur mentioned by the bookseller? You know, it isn't often that the, the dictionary folks come asking us regular people for help. But when they do, I feel like we should help if we can. Obviously, they really need the help. So please, if you know anything about this, if you have anything to offer, let us know. We will pass it on. That's your weekend assignment. That does it for us tonight. We're going to see you again Monday. Very close up. Now that you've been very good and you've watched us for a whole hour, now you have to go to prison. <laughs>